Hi everyone, Mike from the Excel Trainer here. There are several ways to show account in a pivot table, but choosing one over another can sometimes result in an incorrect value. In this video, I'll show you why I prefer to use the count rows function. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. This file contains sales for the first week of January for excellent ice cream. The data is stored in the data model rather than the worksheet, and I need to create some pivot tables. So I'll switch over to the worksheet where I'm going to create them and click on Insert Pivot Table from Data Model. The first pivot table is going to show the number of orders per flavour. So I'll drag in the flavour into rows and to get the number of orders or the count, I'll drag in order ID. And that gives me a count. I've picked order ID because I know that every record has an order ID. In fact, with this data, I can pretty much guarantee there'll be a value in every column for every record. So I could have actually picked any column. Because the order ID column contains text entries, it defaults to account. However, if I drag that away and drag total revenue in instead, because the revenue column in the underlying data contains numeric values, when I drag that in, it defaults to a sum. Now I can change that to account by right clicking on any of the numbers and selecting summarize values by and changing it to count. Now let's create another pivot table. Go back to insert pivot table from data model, drag a location into rows, and I'll drag order ID into values. And then I'll create a third pivot table. Insert pivot table from data model. And this time I'll just drag order ID to values. I'll have nothing in the rows, and nothing in the columns. So what I've got there is a count of the number of orders. Now, as I said, with this data, we can pretty much guarantee there will be a value in every column for every record. However, with the data that you work with, there may well be blank cells, and you can't always predict which column will have the blanks in it. So what I've done is gone back to the original data and just manually added some blanks to some of the cells and then refreshed the data. Although there's a hundred rows of data in the table, you can see here that in the order ID column, there's a couple of blank cells. What that's done to the pivot tables is where I've used the order ID column to do a count, it's now showing me 98. So you can see the pivot tables are showing inaccurate information. So how can we guarantee that the pivot tables will display the correct number of rows regardless of the number of blanks in the data? The answer is to use the count rows function. The count rows function isn't a normal Excel function. You can't type it into a worksheet cell like you can with say sum or XLOOKUP. You can only use it in a measure which is a special type of formula written in Excel's DAX formula language. And measures can only be used with data that's stored in the data model. Having said that, best practice these days is to store your pivot table source data in the data model rather than the worksheet cells. So how do I create a measure? I go up to the power pivot menu, I click on measures and I click new measure. I'm going to call the measure number of orders. And then for the formula, and I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm typing, I'll put equals count. Now there's a number of functions whose name begins with count. I could use count or I could use count A. Count will only count the number of numeric values in a column. So I'd have to choose revenue, costs or containers because they're the three columns in the table that have numbers in. Count A counts the number of values, numeric or otherwise, in a column. Now, if I was to use count A, what I would do is I would select the name of the column. So in this case, order ID. You'll notice that it does include the name of the table. But neither count or count A 
address the blanks issue. Using count or count A will actually result in the same problem I had when I just dragged order ID and revenue into the value section of the pivot table. So instead, I will use count rows. Count rows doesn't rely on a column name. It counts the number of rows in the table. So I'll double click on count rows and then select the name of the table, which is sales. Close the brackets and click OK. Now it automatically added the measure to that third pivot table because that's where my cursor was when I created the measure. So what I'll do is I will drag the count of order ID out. For the second pivot table, I will also remove count of order ID and replace it with a measure called number of orders. And although in the first pivot table, the count is correct, it is right now because I used total revenue and there are no blanks in that column. But what if there were blanks in the future in that column? So I'll drag that out and replace it with number of orders. So the count rows function counts the number of rows in the table, as I say. But also from a speed and performance point of view, count rows is probably faster too because Excel already knows how many rows are in the table. Whereas with count and count A, it has to look at each cell and check whether it contains data and then include it or exclude it from the count. Now, it could be that your data is in the worksheet and for whatever reason, you can't add it to the data model. So here's my sales data, but this time it's in the worksheet and not the data model and the order ID column contains blank cells. Now, I could use one of the other columns to do the count, but it could be that in the future, those columns contain blank cells as well. So what I'm going to do is pick the order ID column to use for the count and then use find and replace to replace blanks with, say, a zero or a dash or anything else for that matter, as long as you have something in every cell. It's up to you. So with column A selected, I'll click the Home tab, go to Find and Select and click on Replace. And I'll replace nothing with a dash and click Replace All. So now every single cell in column A has something in it. And then if I build the pivot table from the table called Sales, put the pivot table to the right of the data and then drag order ID into values and flavor into rows, I have now got the correct value. So in conclusion, if your data is in the data model and you want a count that includes all rows in the table, my suggestion is to use count rows. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments. I also have a free weekly newsletter packed with tips to help you become more productive in Excel. And you can sign up to that at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.